All right, okay, so Forbes. Everybody reads Forbes. Insights is a specialty publication across every industry, but in our own, they released last month. Highly recommend all of you look for Forbes Insights. Wealth and Asset Management is fantastic. It's about 20 pages, but what they summarize themselves from interviews with 400 executives across wealth and asset management funds are three conclusions. In spite of overall growth, 81% of these wealth and asset managers agree that there is incredible increasing competitive pressure in this marketplace. And this is third party conclusion. These are, these are not my summaries from 20 pages. Well over half the executives are in pursuit of operational efficiency. They recognize that they're not talking about 20 points, 15 points, 10 points. They're talking about basis points. They're looking for any opportunity to squeeze their operating expenses and make sure that their profitability below the line remains as fat and as thick as possible. Yes, we can look above the line for our investments. Yes, we can look above the line for our returns. But when we're looking at our GNA, we're looking at the wrap of our back office, what is it doing to eat into our fat margins at the end of the day? We need operational efficiency to make sure that we can get there. And the third conclusion of Forbes Insights is technology is the way to get there. Technology increases productivity. Technology reduces the errors. Technology takes back your time and your money. We can always make more money. You can never make more time. Again, it's not about the bells and whistles, it's about making you profitable. Technology brings you the efficiency and the profitability. It's more the convenience. It's truly profitable. Now, I'd love to paint the picture of you sipping in the sand, you're the margaritas in a beach chair, and you're accessing your portfolio managing fund. That's great, that is definitely a feature. But part of this is making sure that at the end of the day, your collateralized loan is getting those returns, that your IRR is maximized. What is your operating expense? Are you measuring it? Are you looking at the per diem cost of your bookkeeper? Are you looking at the per diem cost of your data entry? Are you looking at the per diem cost of your boots on the ground doing your due diligence research and manning all the notices, all the mailings, all the regulatory compliance of your statutes? Have you measured this? How can technology improve this? Again, as, the, as we all get squeezed in this competitive marketplace, technology is gonna help us build that efficiency, build that profitability. And last but certainly not least, what are your liabilities? Now, I threw a balance sheet up here to kind of speak on the accounting ledger, but more importantly, what are your liabilities of risk? How often is your process, and we all have a process, we all have a system, and it may not be electronic, but Bobby will tell Susie to send this mail. And Susie will run this report for Adam, and Adam is going to get replaced next year by Joe. And Joe's going to change the pivot, and so on and so on. If you have a consistent system, it doesn't really matter what it is. I'm not really, I am here from Vadar, we do have a system, but there are many of our competitors and there are outsourced servicers. I just recommend that you find a system that works for you as efficiently and profitably as possible. What are your errors? What's your loss of data? I had a client in Chicago that lost $25,000 with one data error. How far away are you from that? All of us are really <laughs> pretty one data error away from a four figure loss. I, th I, can, I can say that pretty safely. So make sure that whatever system you're using, whatever operation, whatever process, that it has a feedback loop mechanism that is institutionalized as a process, is repeatable. Because if it's an ad hoc system and you're trusting one person to do it, that person may change. Or that person may get pissed off one day. Just make sure that you have a repeatable process and system to make sure that you have efficacy, accuracy, and efficiency. Oh, and the last one is an efficiency breach, or a security breach. There are definitely some places where I can just walk in, look over someone's shoulder, and get some data on behalf of third parties. We don't want that. We make sure that whatever system we're going to recommend has the highest, tightest security. So when it comes to servicing, I was asked a few times in the last couple of days, what is servicing? All right, servicing software. I'm an investor. I'm just buying some liens. I'm going to get some redemptions, whatever. Why do I need a service? In general, what I'm hearing in NTLA and tax lien talk, and granted, I'm more in the tech industry and newer to your finance industry, but what I, we're, we're encapsulating, and Tom McCosker and Brad Westover, we're, we're kind of encapsulating servicing as this. Portfolio management, collections and payments, notices and mailings, analysis and reports. Now granted, a, an Excel report doesn't usually take that long, but every once in a while you want to know on the fly, in, on the bid, what's happening in my portfolio. A system can help you do that. Every once in a while, you want your checks for your affidavits automatically rolled off the press and sent out to your uh, jurisdiction in Jersey. Every once in a while, you want those collections and payments to come in automatically. Every once in a while, you want to notice or mailing fax to your courthouse. 
These things build your efficiency into your system, and they are key to squeezing every point out of your return that you can get. And we're so excited that, I, again, I refer people to my competitors. I'm just so excited that if you get a system, if you get a repeatable process, you're going to milk every single cent out of that return. So when it comes to servicing, you really have three choices. If you're going to take control and maximize every penny, you can do it in-house. Take control, and you can build a system or you can buy a system. There are several choices to buy, and there are plenty of Avaya and uh, who are the Accentures and IBMs and all sorts of IT consultants that you can go out and spend on average about a quarter million is what I'm hearing, maybe half a million after three years. And I'll show you some statistics from Bloomberg about what it, what it takes to build. For buy, there are also several choices. With competitive marketplace comes a better value for your dollar. And third, and certainly not least, is outsource. If you're the casino dealer investor, wash your hands, give it to MTAC services or other excellent servicers, and they will handle it for you for a few points. Build or buy. Now, this comes from Bloomberg just a year ago, so it's still pretty recent, and it breaks down your business from large, medium, small. I'm going to be conservative. Most of us are small, but I'm going to take the, the uh, medium business center and compare cost overruns, time overruns, and content deficiencies. What Bloomberg concluded for building a system that you hire an IT consultant to build it just the way you want, you're going to end up spending 180% more, and you're going to get a third of the design or scope that you designed. And I'm telling you guys, I have at least, I've only been here a year. I have five people now telling me, Jed, I wish Vader had found me three years ago and $500,000 ago. If all I really ask when you make your build or buy decision is you've got, you've got to do a cost benefit analysis. All I ask is take an hour with me, kick the tires of a system, kick the tires of a competing system, and see if it works for you. It may be 80%, it might be 90%, but if, it, if you know conclusively that you need to design your own, just go in eyes wide open. Technology is not the future. I put up here technology is today. Honestly, a lot of this technology is five years old. What I'm talking about in a system is a shared space environment where you're not emailing a file attachment spreadsheet from one person to another. It's a shared collaborative space in the cloud where every single person has roles and permissions to share data in real time. That's today. That's 10 years ago, but it's today. Manual models, trusting one person to run a 50-tab pivot table, or using algorithms for one-click reports or side-by-side -side analysis. You want a borrowing-based report and you want to change one variable, put up two windows, change that variable, get instant results. Why ask another person or a third party to run that for you for hours or a day? Get it instantly on your screen, sipping margaritas on the beach. Email file attachments, we all do it. And I was asked by Karina, thank you for the excellent question. What's wrong with email file attachments? We all do it. Guys, when you have a spreadsheet and you email a file attachment, what period of time are you capturing? That one moment. That one moment, right? You're working on the fly. We're working in real time. If you're in a collaborative space and you give someone access to a real-time system, there's no more version tracking. There's no more version control. There's no more error. There's no more, oh, the final, final. Wait, 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 wait. That, this is the final, final, final? Or this is version two, this is version three, this is version X. That goes away if you have shared collaboration space in the cloud. And it might be Office 365, guys. It might be Google Drive. I just beg of you to try to transition your system, your process, to some shared collaborative space. Again, I'm not here to just necessarily preach VADAR. There are a lot of wonderful paradigms and technologies, and I'd love to leverage my 10 years from Cisco Systems to whatever benefit it can give you. A lot of what VADAR does, and I've joined an excellent team of 20 years experience, is they really like to consult. They love to give you the best benefit practices from our 100 clients and what rolls out to them for optimization of efficiency and ultimately profitability. Manual mailings. We all know what happens. There are thousands of statutes. We've got to comply with all those statutes. We all know that you have to lick an envelope and put it in the mail. But there are some courthouses that allow us to fax. There are some places where we can automate this process. There are places where we can automate the checks for affidavits in Jersey. And our customers that are doing that are just smiling all the way to the bank because they reallocate so-and-so resource to do their due diligence. Where they used to be licking envelopes, now they're going out and checking maps for accuracy. It's an incredible transition of efficiency, and ultimately, the bottom line is fatter. The all-in-one system that exists today has several different solutions in one. Can it do everything for all things? No. No, I'm not selling an Eskimo 
uh, ice cream. I'm not doing that. I'm just telling you, there is an all-in-one system that does a lot of your servicing. So think carefully about what components of servicing you need and what a system can do for you. And shop around, by all means. But in this slide, you can take sale lists. Automatic sale lists from data providers as excellent as tax sale resources, Grant Street, Lean Source, and so on, to automate data entry. When you have fat finger errors, you lose thousands of dollars. Don't run that risk. Get automated process in your technology to make sure that your data is safe, secure, and accurate. Efficiency is key. Parcel library, make sure that every piece of information you have in that parcel is updated and stored in real time. Your images, your owners, your, your previous lane holders, make sure it's all there in your repository. Your custodian, your lockbox, your cash file, your notices and your payments and your disposition, all the way through the REO process, a system can be self-contained in a cloud collaborative space and track all this data. And basically, the structure is in a virtual space with several different databases. And if you can imagine, if you will, two dimension and three dimension, we have a lot of people in spreadsheets that are working in rows and tables, and that works for a while. When you have 500 liens, you can manage that. When you get to 5,000 liens, we're seeing pivot tables and 50 tabs. And guys, I'll tell you, they're losing dollars. They're losing hours. And we don't want you to do that. We want to make sure that you build on a foundation that you can scale your growth. And that comes back to relational databases. They take the row and table and add a third dimension, where every piece of data is entered into thousands of different tables. And then those tables have key components of algorithms defined as needed with accuracy and data. And that gives you so much more power than just a flat 2D space. On the outside of it, once you import all this information, your access is key. You need to have access on the fly. You need to have it in real time. Have a dashboard. We have something that gives you the pies and charts and everything you want with the glimpse. Have a power search. Make sure that your ways of searching have every single identifier. You have to know the exact parcel number to find something on your Excel spreadsheet? Of course not. You want a Boolean search. You want a partial term. And make sure that you can find that one trouble property or duty down in Florida. An instant analysis is so key. Why waste a day? Why waste three hours running a report when you can have instant analysis with so many systems out there in the field? With collaboration and sharing files, I want to show you this image a little bit, if you will. Walk through a day of Outlook, and four people were using Outlook. Somebody will send and receive a Word file attachment. Then they will edit it, then they will send it again, and then they will redistribute it, and then they will re-edit it. How many versions are you working on? Is your track changes on or off? What color are they? What are the initials? That all goes away when everybody shares one system in the cloud. And again, it's in real time. It's not a document freezing, freezing one place in the past. Instant analysis. Some of the reports we have are all you know, pre-built and fabricated, and it's fantastic. The important part of the instant analysis is A, it takes seconds, and B, it's, it has at least 12 parameters for you to cut and drill. Do you want your reporting by your state? Sure, that's easy. Do you want it by your date? Sure, that's easy. What about your parcel type? Do you want to compare your residentials against your commercials? What about your empty lots? What about your ineligibles? I know um, some lenders are really concerned about ineligibles on your uh, collaboration base. Um, Lane sur summary by class. All these powerful analytics give you more power to process your due diligence in the next investment round. Demonstration, unfortunately, had a little tech uh, challenge. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk you through the Lean App solution real quick, the Vader opportunity for you to have. And again, just you know, run a demo with me. See, kick the tires. See if you like it. Um, this is a quick view of the high-level manager's view of Lean App. The building of Lean App is basically on that dashboard sits below five main modules, the acquisition or the buying of the property. We don't really help with due diligence. There are definitely other people that can help you with that and refer you to them. But once you buy that parcel, it's automatically imported into the system. No more fat finger data entry, no more wasted time. Custodian, coordination of your M150 file and all of that is in the back end. No more email and an attachment, downloading it, repeating. We had a customer holding up their collateralization $10,000 a month. Cash is king, folks. It was held up because a custodian, who shall remain nameless, but we all know, was over-repeating the same information and then some. Those errors, whether it was a residential address versus a garage versus a commercial, whatever the error was, it held up that money until they could uh, confirm and, and uh, edit it. 
what a lean app and other systems can do is verify your cache file on the back end, your C112, whatever that file is, it's verified for only the data that's necessary to get you going and get approval, lower your uh, borrowing base and get, uh, get going. Sorry, custodian, redemption cycle, there's an automated approval of payment for those, re uh, those redeemed levels that are a positive ROI, but we also have an override to make sure that a, a manual person can make sure that you're getting the payments that you want on your redemption time. Again, it's all about efficiency. We try to build in everything automated, but there's a manual override so that you can maintain control. Subsequence, I mentioned the affidavits checks. How, rolling up all those subsequence into your final IRR, or XIRR, and making sure that that's accurate. Making sure that everything is automated and you're not asking one person to, with their model to factor all this into their calculations. And enforcement, finally, is a project-based module that we give you to define your process with groups and tracks and steps. What works for you in your process, whether uh, you need to call this council, what's their number, that notification goes on to Bob, Bob then writes this payment. All of that is set with us. We consult with you to set it up, and then you're out of sight, out of mind. It's a continual, repeatable process that gives you efficiency. It's no more ad hoc shoot from the hip. And on the, the bottom five circles, at any time, you can search the powerful Boolean search for anything, anywhere. More important than that is auditability. How much time does it take for you to go back and wonder what happened back in March? Well, with LeanApp, we let you track who made what change for how much when. And at any point in time, you can go back and find a discrepancy in minutes. We don't want you wasting time. We don't want you wasting dollars. We want you maximizing every penny. The instant analysis I've mentioned, the export, we have nine different file types that you can export. What we really like to do is make sure we're interoperable with your system. We're not going to tell you, go get this because you have us. Or go, get, you know, go design that. We want to make sure that your systems today are going to work with what we have. And last, the interface, we want to make sure that we'll work with your QuickBooks or we'll work with your printer. Very important, and we make sure that it works for you. The dashboard that I showed you there will give you an instant return, several different funds. Uh, I know Adam was telling us to name those funds a little bit better than ABC or 123, but whatever you're naming your different pools and borrowing bases, we track that on a time basis for performance. So you on this color band can instantly know performance and ask someone, someone to dive in and find out a little bit more what's going on. And then the pie charts take by volume and by value a little bit of grouping. So you, you have a nice 30,000 foot, foot uh, feature. Every day it's updated. Every day you're getting another summary of your performance. The colors here are something that we introduced not everybody's familiar with. It's the lane type. Obviously, if you have outstanding lanes, you've redeemed lanes, you're calculating very differently. We also have pending redemption. So what we call the lanes invested and not yet redeemed are current or blue. What we call redeemed are purple. In Jersey, when you're told that it's going to be re redeemed, but you haven't received a dollar, that's a pending redemption. How many of you measure your cash float? The time that you get dollar one to the time that you're fully redeemed. How many counties are paying you in days, weeks, months? How does that cash float analysis affect your future investment by which counties? How is that going to affect your back pocket and wallet at the end of the next cycle? Very powerful stuff. Instant reports, many types. We'll move through this. Here's the side-by-side -side analysis I want you to take a look at. Instead of asking someone to run a report, on the top of these two windows, side by side, are about a dozen parameters. Your interest calculation date, your time, and your, your, uh, the sample pool. Are you looking at 2013, 2014, 2015? Take a look at um, the state, the county, the jurisdiction, and the fund. All of these are, are ways and parameters to find what you're looking for. So these two sheets are side by side the same parameters. Let me see, we're looking at redeemed liens in one fund across all states. And we're comparing the purchase to cash to purchase to redemption. How much money are you told that you're getting? How much money are you actually getting? What's the cash in hand? Again, cash is king. So we look at the difference here, and the IRR goes from 7.29% to 10.3%. Is that a big cash flow issue? Yes. Are you going to drill down and look a little further at who's paying you, how fast, and when? Yes. You do that, you're going to build efficiency. We have clients that have just thanked us. Those two points that we didn't see, oh my gosh, thank you so much. We cut out those counties that paid us in months, and we're including those counties that pay us in, in days. 
Another side-by-side -side example. Instead of running a report, throwing it over the wall, waiting for someone to come back over the wall to you, on your laptop screen, you're looking at live results and data analysis side-by-side. -side. Audit, I mentioned. You're always tracking in your system. Again, with relational tables in a collaboration space in real time, you're always tracking who made what change when for how much. Because every user has their sign-in, every user has their role and permission. If they're walled into one fund and not another, we can do that. If they're walled into Alabama and not Arkansas, we can do that. Parcel type. We have commercial, not available, residential, vacant. We can do the ineligibles, as I mentioned earlier. Do a drill down analysis. And again, this is in seconds, folks. This is not asking somebody to do on the fly report. And if you have a report that's working for you, how quickly can you change and adapt to the needs that your new lender or borrowing base is demanding of you? Make sure that you're scalable, make sure that you're flexible, and most of all, folks, make sure that you're profitable. Thank you, and here's Geo. So, uh, as Jed mentioned, and we've been focusing on today, the, lean te the technology in the lean industry is of utmost importance, right? What we can see is that you have to develop these type of efficiencies to be able to maximize your returns. If you don't, you're going to lose time. When you lose time, you lose money. All right. Um, I took this quote from Wall Street and Tech. Inherent inefficiencies siphon off profits and keep the industry from meeting its potential. And as an industry, insufficient technology is one of the things that holds it up overall. So without technology, as, a in, as an industry, we are going to stay behind if we don't adapt. Right. The great thing about this is we'll be focusing, we'll be having very few systems in, in comparison to what we usually have. We have maybe five, six, seven screens open at the same time. So I know Jed went into a lot of detail on the, on the development of technology as a whole. So I'm just going to si siphon down into the, the actual application today. Right? I'll just give you a bit of a run through of what actually Access Terminal does. That is the tool that we are also creating to do efficiencies in the market, along with, with, with Jed working on, his, on Vadar's lean app. And they're trying to create those efficiencies on the portfolio management side. So for Access Terminal, we wanted to actually create a tool, a terminal, a sort of Bloomberg-type terminal, in which in empowered investors to be able to research, acquire, transfer, service, and sell tax liens in both the primary and the secondary markets. Right? Basically have everything under one roof. Now, we also want Access Terminal to be able to do that for every single step from start to finish in the lean process. Basically, a world in which all tax lien service providers could also deliver value to investors in a consolidated marketplace. Basically, be able to go through the life of your lien from start to finish on one, one portal under one roof. So what is Access Terminal? It's like I said, we're creating it to be the Bloomberg type portal of the industry where you can go through the process of doing your due diligence for both the primary and the secondary market. You'll be able to also manage portfolios, service them, buy and sell on the secondary market, and go through the transfer and clearing process. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of uh, screenshots of how uh, the primary market portal, which is the one that we're rolling out right, to the market, so you guys can develop those efficiencies. And while you're doing your due diligence on the primary market app, you'll take information that could take you, a process that could take you, let's say, a week and a half, you could whittle it down to days. So in the primary market, you'll be able to save time and due diligence. I'll use, as I mentioned, less screens. You'll have seven, eight, six screens um, while I could just focus on one specific portal. And your set filters and custom tagging. The other thing about having uh, this technology in the, the industry is that we've made it so that every lien that is uploaded onto the terminal is assigned a, a lien ID, sort of like a QCIP number. Right? When you do that, your data will per persist over time. So anything that you do on the portal, you'll be able to track going forward. So in essence, also, um, for the portal, the data is basically it's, it's what feeds it. So you'll be able to, once you upload your data from, from a provider, whether it's Linux, you know, TSR, any, any of the data subscribes, You'll be able to select your auction by state, by county. Create, you'll have your own parameters. You can filter them down and go through, let's say, a 70,000 lien list and load it down to 20,000 in a minute. 
you'll be able to choose the liens within those parameters that you're interested. Go into an individual research of them, all under one screen. You won't have your, to have your Google Maps and then your Bing Maps and then you'll have your spreadsheet. You'll have everything under one view. As well as being able to export that same list that you whittled down onto one document and use it for your auctions. Now, going forward, uh, we will also have the secondary market portal in the future. When we're, when we're rolling it out, you'll be able to upload your portfolios, view it by total face value, redemptive values, um, the day it was uploaded, along with the states involved. You'll also be able to view the portfolios that are listed that, that are for sale, right? You'll be able, all, all the same case, have the total of liens, the face values, the redemptive values. And once we continue adding in servicing, adding in portals on Access Terminal, you'll be able to also go through the transfer and, clear, and clear, uh, clearing process of the liens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit, uh, go into a live demo, show you how it works, uh, so you can have an idea. So this is the primary market due diligence portal. You'll be able to, once you get your listing, you'll be able to filter down by state, by county. Let's say you want to go to Illinois and to Lake, right? There we go. So you want to go to Illinois and to Lake. Excuse me, I'm having a bit of a Wi-Fi problem. There we go. So you go to your county, you go to state, you go to the county, you'll see you have a total of 5,000 liens, and you obviously you don't want to go through absolutely all of them. You'll have your own parameters. And let's say that you want to only see single family residential properties, and you only want to see properties that have face values from 1,500 to just get a maximum figure of a million dollars, and that have assessed values from 150,000 to 10 million, right? You can either filter by that. We also have added a, a variety of filters. You know, zip code exclusion includes, year built, LTVs, market values. Anything that is, that is in the, all these filters that if they're provided in the data, you can filter by them, right? Let's say you want to exclude a zip code. You're saying, okay, so I don't want to see properties that are 60096, right? You apply your filters. You went down from 5,382 in a second, right? Other than that, um, there's also a component I'd really like to talk to you about. It's uh, the tag feature. So the great thing about having this technology um, is the efficiency, like I mentioned, it develops. You'll be able to create a tag. You assign it any way you want. You can create your own name um, that you want to do property inspections that you want. You consider a prospect. You want to do more due diligence. It's very simple. It's very easy. You go to Tags tab, you create a new tag. And let's say, all right, so I wanted to do diligence on, on these properties. You sign our color. And you create your tag, right? So the great part about this is you can assign that value to a property. You can tag a property and say, okay, so I'm going to do due diligence out of the 300 properties on these top three properties. Select your tag, you assign it, and you'll have those tags persisting over time, obviously, unless you delete them. But you'll be able to persist over time and actually filter by them. So in essence, once that uh, lien is uploaded, that parcel is uploaded, 
it'll be assigned that QCEP number and in an auction two years from now, three years from now, that lien appears again on the same property in, in another year, you'll be able to go back down once you upload a list and see that it, has, it had a, a due diligence tag and you are actually interested in that property. Now, on the portal also, you will be able to assign your own, your own bids uh, for your, your process before you export your list, right? So you could either choose to bid down to 0.2% uh, or you could bid a premium. You could assign both on, on the terminal as well as going through the download liens. So basically, after you've done all your due diligence, you will be able to select the ones that you want to download, and we can download in any of these formats. They are all supported. It could be Leanalytics, it could be MTAG, it could be Grand Street Group. And on the Leanalytics format, you can actually download any notes, any bids, any tags, so you can actually see any comments you had also on a spreadsheet if you need. Now let's say that you actually want to see in details your properties, right? You click on the parcel number. You'll have your Google Maps, you'll have your Bing Maps, and you'll have your Street View also. All under one screen. You have a summary of the property, of the data, the access values, the year built, uh, face value, any collector data that was uploaded as well as any property level data with, that was on that list. You know, the standardized land use codes, residential uh, land use code, I mean the county land use codes, longitudes and latitudes. Any property level information. Any assessor data information that was on that list, on that property. As well as any additional data that could be either environmental data, any information that a, may, might not fit into these previous tabs. Like I mentioned, you can also add in notes. These also will, pers will persist over time. You will have all of your data concentrated under one place. And you say, all right, so this is a prospect. Save your note. And that'll persist unless, obviously, it is, it is uh, deleted. You'll be able to go through the list by clicking next lien or previous lien as well as um, we will also have this uh, functionality on the secondary market platform also once it is rolled out. So as of it, this is the run through of the actual access terminal primary market due diligence portal. Uh, any questions you guys might want me to answer in the meantime before we, we what's the panel? Yes. It's through the internet. Okay. Yes. It's actually it's not on the flash drive. Um, it's a link. It's uh, I could actually send that out. We we could talk afterwards offline. I could actually send that out and go through a, a, a get a login and everything. It's uh, a lean ID, but sort of like the same concept. Yeah. So it's, it's a sign that on an algorithm based on the back end uh, that, that I, I, cannot, I can't actually just, you know, just show how. Um, it, it's it's uh, based on the parcel number that's the unique identifier. Yeah. guys. Um, so now we're just going to open up this, uh, this uh, panel here into an open conversation with the room. Um, so I guess I'll go with the first question and then of course you guys can raise your hand and we'll, uh, we'll go like that. Um, so really we know in this industry um, it's a fairly small industry but yet every fund that exists or investor that exists in the space has their own methodologies and their own way of doing things. So maybe you guys can talk about the different processes um, that you've seen that 
investors approach you with and essentially ask how your technology can help increase their efficiencies um, in their you know day to day planning. Chad, maybe you take a stab at this first. Uh, sure, I think I mentioned a few. I know one process that we all have is uh, mailings, as well as collections, as well as payments. If there's some technology to automate, I think we can all agree that we'd rather spend the money on a worker bee doing something other than licking stamps, <laughs> stuffing envelopes, or sending these mailings. Uh, one specific process that transforms a very common procedure is mail merge and making sure that whatever system you're using can automatically print out the right parcels with the right address with the right amount onto a form letter and that letter gets sent either by fax or if it has to be mailed then yeah but that's a very specific process that if somebody measures their annual spend can really cut 90 percent down mm -hmm. okay. so uh sorry uh as i mentioned you from the processes that we've seen um you'll have someone have like I mentioned, a Google map, a Bing map, you'll have a spreadsheet, you'll also have the assessor site, you'll have the, the county website, uh, plus any additional data that you've, you've accumulated. All this is basically, with this technology, it's, it's lowering that, that's getting that process down to one screen, right. seeing everything under one place. Perfect. Um, I think uh, a question that everyone here probably is thinking, uh, maybe afraid to ask, is, what is the cost? What is the cost of these, having these systems, maintaining these systems for their funds, um, and really, what is the you know, cost-benefit analysis of that? That's a great question, and everybody does need to do a cost-benefit analysis. I'll start with the paradigm of, um, well, hey, uh, Henry Ford said, if people asked me what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. I think St Steve Jobs said something to the same. There's that upgrade to save paradigm that we all need to know that if you spend $4 every day on Starbucks and you have an alternative way to upgrade to a Keurig at home, that paradigm follows to our investment strategies as well. If you're gonna to continue to spend on your spreadsheets and your staff, that's a known cost and you could definitely measure that. But if you upgrade with a CapEx once, you lower your OpEx over time. Vadar with our lean app has three-year agreements. So every customer has an ROI in less than 24 months, uh, net positive. And uh, we have costs that scale from the number of states, number of users, and the number of funds or borrowing bases that you have. Um, our entry weight rate that includes all the upgrades and, and support, call me, I'll let you know. It's, it's, it's almost like, how can you afford to risk that five figure error of one data point missing? How can you afford that security breach? How can you afford not to upgrade your systems to some solution out there because we really, I, 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 I met too many people and said, Jed, I really wish you had found me half a million dollars ago. Well, I mean, in Access Terminal's case, um, for the moment, it's free. Um, really, your, your, your cost is the data aggregation that you, you make once that's uploaded. I mean, it's, you have really no cost and you're actually saving time, which is, in, a, in essence, money. So, I mean, maybe it's negative. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thank you. Does anybody have any questions in the audience? No. Yes, Mark. Well, I mean, once you go into the, we have the, the parcels geocoded. So basically, you'll be able to see the parcel overlays. So you sort of have like the core we, we have, a, and we do the mapping on the terminal as soon as we, we just need the data to, to get it up there. I don't know if that answers your question. No, actually, um, we do do that on we sorry we do that on on the back end basically uh, an outside vendor that that can give us the the overlays with the data that that is provided. If if there were no data on on that specific parcel, then you wouldn't be able to to see it uh, on those maps. Uh, 
Uh, so no, really. Uh, currently, it's it's structured for uh, um, data subscription. So basically, when you have um, a data aggregator, let's say a, a Lean Analytics, a TSR, a Lumentum, we we can uh, support those formats and provide the the upload, so you can actually see everything in one place. Perfect. I think uh, another just to continue from what you had said, Jed, uh, about you know I wish I wish uh, you know we found you five hundred you know or you know five hundred thousand dollars ago. Um, let's talk about integrations and transitions. Uh, you know, taking from uh, essentially where current fund managers are today, and how this transition uh, into this new technology can really um, improve your efficiency on you know, or at least in the lean market itself, um, and what capabilities the lean app uh, and access you know has for our marketplace and really the the investors sitting in this room. That's a great question. Um, I'll quote Chambers from Cisco who said that the web and online world evolved from actions to transactions to interactions. And we've seen an evolution from the efficiency of actions with your big box cray, uh, machines to interactions in web 2.0, and I, I, sorry, transactions and the automation of the mail merge, the automation of calculations to where we're going to interactions. Where you have an online space to collaborate, it transforms your practice. It, it uh, empowers your road force with mobile smartphone visuals uploaded to a common store. Um, we're going to have a major rollout this uh, year. I'm, I'm excited. In February, I'll announce what that is. And it's just going to be another phase of transformation. I think that's the common element there is really the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, the cloud gives you three big things. It gives you the economy and efficiency of a commoditization. Your network storage and compute, and compute are no longer paid for your CapEx and your OpEx. They're just you pay Azure or AWS and you just get your, you, you, they're racing to the bottom with pricing. Why not take advantage of it? The second thing is that collaborative workspace where everybody's talking with the frozen point in time with an email attachment rather than speaking in real time in one place shared with their smartphone that everybody already has. That's the second big advantage. And the third one is fitting with your system. We don't tell you, hey, if you have lean app, you better go upgrade your QuickBooks. We don't do that. We make sure that in this system, you can export to nine different file types, and those file types will be interoperable with what you're working with today. And I guess the last thing I'll say is just make sure that you, whatever system, whatever technology you decide, that it's effective and efficient, but very importantly, it's scalable. Because we have some clients that had to peel off Band-Aids very painfully because they didn't build a foundation that was scalable from the beginning. On Access's level, um, so the way we've we've done it is basically standardize everything to have under one place, and that you can actually integrate very easily, and you can actually export anything in the the to go on your point also, in any format you you really need, whether it's uh, as I mentioned um, a Grandster group or it's a custodian uh, format, any of those formats that can easy, be easy that can be integrated into your systems, we can provide on on Access to develop that efficiency in the market. Right, oh, that's, that's great. Um, does anybody else have any more questions? No, well, And if you, you don't have questions, I'm sorry, we're yeah, gonna no, interrupt. If you don't have questions, our architect likes to say, and uh, you've probably all met Frank Natale, Rob Natale at one point or another, he likes to say, Vader, we don't own a monopoly on good ideas. Where you and your niche and your point of the value chain with tax liens have a better idea. I've spoken with several of you this week about points of access for your point in the value chain. If you were to see the investor's analytic as a lender, as a consultant, as a servicer, how would that benefit you? If you have a feature that you say, wow, I'd like this, we've honestly rolled out three features this year alone to all of our, um, all of our uh, clients for free because it just made it better. Uh, where it's unique, yeah, we, we build a little bit of an upfront cost, but where you have an idea to make a better mousetrap, I would love to hear it. And uh, demos of these are always available, right, Gio? Exactly, yes. So just give us a call. We'd I mean, I don't know about you, you can tell I'm passionate about this. I love this stuff. So give me a call. I'd be happy to share a screen with you and show you how it works. Awesome. Definitely. Thank you. Guys. Same here. Appreciate it.